Hello there, it's Ani. I'm so happy you're here. Today we're going to read a book that's very special to my family. My kids ask me to read it to them every Christmas. It's called Siegfried's Silent Night. If you have a copy, go get it so you can read along with me. Siegfried's Silent Night, story by Brad Bluth, illustrations by Toby Bluth. Twas Oberndorf, Austria, in the year 1818. The home of the Vaughn family mice is the scene. Siegfried, second youngest of the family Vaughn mice, sits cutting gold paper in the same shape twice. It's a bright Christmas star for the top of the tree. He does a good job for his papa to see. Papa Vaughn is a sailor, and he's long been away. But his family's expecting him home Christmas Day. Lanky Lars, the eldest, is directing the scene, while Tina helps Katrina trim the fresh evergreen. Roly-poly Papa helps his mama bake treats. He rolls out the dough for the big cookie sheets. And Mama holds the youngest, her new baby Thor, when they're summoned by the sound of rat-tat at the door. The whole family hears, and thrilled by the sound, squealing, Papa, Papa, to the front door they bound. But it isn't Papa hunched before the family von Mice. It's Uriah, the landlord, with a soul cold as ice. The rat slithers in. What a rogue of a gent. Season's greetings, he says. Do you have the rent? Then Papa comes home, begins Mama Vaughn. The rat interrupts. Stop, stop, stop. Don't go on. You see, my dear lady... The sly rat begins. He pretends to be sad, but inside he grins. Such sad news I bear. Twas a storm we've to thank. They found no survivors when your husband's ship sank. Mama lets out a cry, and Uriah presses near. I could help with your family if you'd wed me, my dear. I'm a man of some means, stocks and properties to share. You'd have no rent worries, and I like Kitty's sale. He grabs Mama Vaughn, throws his arms round her waist. He gives her a kiss, much to her distaste. This is the straw that breaks the rat's back. The family Vaughn mice now spring to attack. Oh, how the fur flies as they tumble about. There is kicking and biting and whiskers pulled out. The big rat is stronger and about to win when Mama clouts his head with a rolling pin. The rat spits and sputters and his eyes spin around. Then out comes a howl, a horrible sound. I'll have my revenge, he vows with a shout. Then he forcibly kicks the Vaughn family mice out. The night is now silent. They're cold in the snow, and the fatherless family has no place to go. Mama gathers her children. Viva storm here to Veza. The papa alive, he'd say stick to guess her. Then Siegfried speaks up. Papa's not dead! And when he comes home, he'll bust that rat's head! Siegfried, look out! Mama Vaughn screams as out springs a cat from nowhere, it seems. Panicked mice scatter in every direction, seeking some place to hide, some place for protection. When the danger is past, they realize the cost. There lies Siegfried's glasses, but Siegfried is lost. 
Bong, 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 the church bells toll. A shrine near the church holds the little lost soul. Around him, silent figures seem frozen as can be. Without the aid of glasses, Siegfried cannot see. This shrine holds a creche and the Christmas child, the holy infant so tender and mild. Siegfried is freezing. Will he end this way? He thinks of his father and starts to pray. Oh, please, God. I haven't been naughty. Don't let me end up a frozen mouse body. It could have been chance or carefully planned, but it seemed at that moment someone lent a hand. For out of the blue and coming his way are the family von mice and a boy with a sleigh. Siegfried hears them and squeals, That family is mine! And he gets so excited, he falls out of the shrine. His mama cries, Siegfried! And so do the others. There is hugging and kissing from sisters and brothers. Mama gives him his glasses so Siegfried can see the boy who befriended his lost family. The boy's name is Gustel. He smiles with delight, and in the boy's eyes, all is calm, all is bright. I live in this church in a room that is nice. You can all live with me and be the church mice. They go through the door and, to their delight, see people preparing for Christmas this night. Some deck the halls with boughs of pine, while the choir sings praise to that night divine. But one thing above all captures young Siegfried's eye, the gold pipes of the organ reaching up to the sky. And the voice of the organ, as it sings with the choir, lifts the little mouse higher and higher. Gustel stops at his door. Siegfried looks back and then he says, God's house is beautiful! And the choir sings Amen. A star in the sky shines a heavenly light as Mama tucks her children in bed for the night. Their bellies are full, their cares seem to cease, while the family von Mice sleep in heavenly peace. All except Siegfried, who tosses and turns, an unsettled feeling inside of him churns. He climbs out of bed and says, God, not to bother, but I can't sleep. I've been thinking about father. Now I know that you saved us from the jaws of the cat and you saved us from freezing when it came down to that. And I really like living here in your house and I like the big organ and I'll be a good mouse. And I know you've watched Papa while he's been away. So could you send him home for us Christmas Day? The little mouse, still not sure how he ranks, ends his request with, By the way, thanks! Now who's that in the shadows in this room in God's house? What sinister figure is watching the mouse? This ominous someone in cloak and hat is their villainous landlord, Uriah the Rat. He muffles a chuckle inside of his shroud. Now I will have the revenge that I vowed. So you like the big organ? Well, an organ needs bellows. If it looked like mice chewed them, you would be homeless fellows. So pleased with himself, he chuckles once more. Then he slithers his way through the bellows room door. There lie the bellows, made of leather and wood, the things mice might chew if they weren't being good. The rat rips the bellows, he chews and rips more. 
but he stops when he sees Siegfried standing in the door. He cannot leave this witness who has observed his attack, so he snatches the child and stuffs him in a sack. He arrives at the docks just before dawn, where he's going to drown Siegfried when he meets Papa Vaughn. Though his ship had sunk, Papa Vaughn is all right. He has been to his home and found the mess from the fight. So he corners the rat and snarls, What's going on? Where's my wife and my babies? Where's my family gone? Uriah denies knowing but begins to perspire when out pops Siegfried screaming, Uriah's a liar! Papa knows in a flash what has come about, so he draws back his fist and he knocks the rat out. Christmas bells rang as the family united. All were happy. Siegfried was delighted, for not only had Papa come home Christmas Day, but the organist and priest wrote a new song to play. Not for the organ, but a song to sing of Joseph and Mary and the newborn king. And Siegfried learned one thing as he heard Silent Night. What seems a misfortune can turn out all right. What did Siegfried do when he was afraid and needed help? He prayed, didn't he? Have you ever prayed when you needed help? God is always there for us. I hope you enjoyed our story and have a very, very Merry Christmas. See you next time. If you liked this video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And leave me a comment to let me know what your favorite books are.